Hey, what's up everyone? This is Dr. Corey Glenn with Transcend Digital Lab, and I thought I would show a new version of our magnetic guide that we've been doing that uh, I'm really liking. I think it adds even more stability and just makes it the whole process even more accurate. Uh, it's mostly similar to how we've been doing it with a few little twists. And so with this newest version, what I'm doing, and I've got a, a demo case here that we're about to send out to a customer. So one of the key differences, we're actually using an initial pin placement guide. So with this, you can see the pin tubes go almost all the way to the bone. There's a path of draw built into it, uh, but the tubes extend as far down here as they can, which keeps you really, really on track. There's really no chance that you can get off and bore your own path like you can sometimes do if you've got a very uh, short guiding tube on it. Let's say if it's only four or five millimeters, you get a lot of wag factor uh, when you do that. So in this method, what we're doing is you would go ahead and lay your flap it really only has to be a buckle flap and only far enough to extend just past these tubes. And then you would take your pin drill, you would just hub out in each of these uh, sites. And then as soon as you've done that, you can take this off and toss it. You're done with that guide. Now really where the twist comes in in this uh, method is in the design of your reduction guide. And so again, you can see it's basically the same design with a, a big key difference in that you've got built in pins uh, that are part of the reduction guide. Now this has uh, got a purpose in that it really makes this much more stable. So one of the things I've found historically when we would do an, a separate pin guide is that now you would take a reduction guide, imagine if these are not on there, and you go in and now you're sitting there with a pin and you're trying to find how to line up the holes. It can be a pain in the butt. However, with this, it removes all of that uh, issue because these pins are all placed parallel. They're actually part of the reduction guide. Uh, and what you would do is just line them up and press in. What that does is align everything for you. And then just to avoid uh, any possibility of dipping in the back, you can go ahead and insert your posterior pins. But one of the things I would point out and why I'm really liking this is even without that, uh, one of the things I've seen historically on these buckle only guides is that you can get a little bit of a dipping factor and it's not much once you get in all the pins in place, but it, it can add up. You know, it, it, if you get, let's say half a millimeter of apical deviation of this guide as you're really drilling down, that can translate to a decent amount of movement. And if you're close to the nerve, you know, that uh, potentially could become an issue unless you've given yourself a pretty good zone of safety. With this, because there is no play between a pin and a tube, you know, you've got to have some offset space. Uh, otherwise, things don't draw properly. But here, because they're all one piece, when this gets inserted, even without the posterior pins, look at how stable that is. I am pushing down pretty hard and I cannot make this deviate apically. The only direction this thing can move in any direction is just straight out, okay? And the only reason for these posterior pins is to resist that movement. So once I drop in the posterior pins, remember the holes having already been drilled, you've only got two pins to deal with. Now that's stable, that's in there. Pull your teeth, do your bone reduction. And obviously I, I'm not gonna do bone reduction on this model, so I've got a separate model that has the bone reduction completed. So imagine we just did bone reduction and now things would look like this. Okay, this would be where you're at after your bone reduction. You're just simply reducing the bone down to this level. And even though the bone reduction goes a little posterior to that, you know, this is giving you the trajectory and you can just continue on, but there's no need to lay an excessive flap all the way back here for that. Uh, really that's beyond the level of where your prosthetics and everything are going to go. So you don't have to do that. Uh, just follow the trajectory and then taper it up into the ramus. Okay. So bone reduction has been completed and now you would take your magnetic drill guide and this would just drop in place. All right. Very nice and stable. Put the pin back in. Don't do that to your patient. Don't turn them upside down and do that because your pin might come out. Um, but now you've got your magnetic drill guide. You can drill each of your implant sites. There is no chance that this thing is moving on you during use. 
uh, it's just really, really stable. The most posterior pin is actually uh, even with your distal most implant site, and so that's going to keep you from having any kind of deviation of the guide. All right, and then once you've done your drilling, this can come off, and finally you would have your prosthesis, which again uh, has a perfectly ovate intaglio, so that you don't have to go uh, reshaping it like you would in a traditional uh, conversion. This just drops into place. It's exactly three millimeters off the bone and your cylinders would come right up through this hole. And one of the unique things that we do, notice these holes are small from the top. And if you look from the apical, they're wider because this actually has a path of draw over those cylinders. So when all those implants are in place, even though they may be deviating in direction from one another, uh, and historically that would require you to maybe pick up one cylinder at a time or two at a time, with this, you pick up every cylinder simultaneously. And I have not drilled them yet on this one, but the way I do the pickup is I actually uh, just make an injection hole in the lateral side here. It's much easier access, avoids you having to salt and pepper. And the benefit is that it leaves this hole really small where it's basically just a little bigger than your driver. Okay, so you're not gonna have to, to rebuild all the occlusal surface because of your pickup and getting excess out. You would simply inject your material in, it would fill all the way around the cylinder, do that in each site, and then just let that set up, and then you're basically done. You would now undo your screws, all of this would pop out, and now all you have to do is slice off the indexing portion. Uh, another thing you might notice is this is a 3D printed gingival skin. This is all a monolithic permanent crown and bridge material, but with a gingival skin reason for that is because when I did this just pinking it with stain in the past then once you remove this you would have to go back and repink that area because now you got a big white spot with this it's got some depth to it so even after you section this off you're still left with a nice pink surface less work on the conversion okay so that's uh, that's the case uh, I'll show you just the maxillary portion as well just so you can see it all okay so once again you put on your tooth supported guide, just drill pinholes, okay? Um, as soon as you're done with that, take it off, toss it. With that done, you would bring your reduction guide into the mouth, uh, just line up the pins. This will press all the way in. It's fully anatomic. It goes all the way to the bone, uh, which is nice because one, it's closer to your level of reduction, keeps you in that plane better. Uh, secondly, I just like the fit of that much better where I can visually see that it's all the way flush against the bone. Um, and that is a little bit more work on the planning phase, like on my end, but from a customer perspective, if I'm doing this surgery, I feel much better about that being anatomic, going all the way to the level of the bone. All right, done your bone reduction. Now it looks like this. Drop my pins in. And again, we supply these models on every case because that really helps the, the doctor doing the surgery to be able to go through, fit everything, get a feel for how it feels in the mouth. Um, and it just makes for a smoother surgery. Okay, so bone reduction completed here. Uh, one of the things I point out is just look how thin this is. Uh, this is only three and a half millimeters tall vertically, only three millimeters uh, horizontally going out, so very, very minimal flap, even more so than the previous magnetic guides that we were doing. This is about uh, about as thin as you can go. I suppose you could go a hair thinner. Reason for the three is just because the magnets I'm using are three. Okay, so that puts the magnets uh, in where you don't have anything sticking apically. And yes, I could go probably thinner with that, but then you don't have as much grab with the magnets. Okay, so here's your reduction. Once that's complete, drop on your drill guide, drops into place, okay? And now you do your implant drilling, all right? Do it through each site. And then once that is done, now you put on your conversion prosthesis. And once again, monolithic printed, except for this gingival skin, which I've integrated. Uh, three millimeters off the bone for the intaglio. It's all ovate, meaning you don't have 
any significant conver conversion to do. It's all going to be at the ideal uh, distance. So that's basically uh, how the case is set up. So I hope you found that helpful. If you're interested in submitting cases, go to transcenddigitallab.com and uh, you can fill out the start a case tab to open an account and then you can submit all your files through the portal there and we'd be happy to help you. Thanks.